Hi, another quick video on interfacing microcontrollers with the outside world. Um, just done one a um, little while ago regarding how to drive um, up to 24 volt loads using a microcontroller of either 5 volt or 3.3 volt um, supply rail where you know directly driving it is not an option because obviously the volts are just so incompatible. Um, the load currents are fairly significant so even if the voltages were compatible uh, the microcontroller pins could not handle it. Um, anyway, so if you want to watch that video, I'll provide a link to it and you can go have a look. This video is detailing how you can actually um, sense the outside world. So if it's a, um, a relay, sorry, a door sensor, uh, light sensor, temperature, humidity, or um, you know something else that's of high volts, and you want to be able to bring it into your microcontroller, there's two ways of doing it. And one of them, which I'm just going to very quickly draw here, is just simply using a resistor divider chain. So let's just assume that um, we're going to use, say, a 24 volt or uh, you know anything above 12 volt kind of signaling system out as the sensor. And we've got a 3.3 you know, or 5 volt microcontroller that wants to receive the signal. So out here, we've got some kind of sensor that's going to output something that goes from 0 volts um, up to say you know 24 volts whatever it might be not the 24 volts coming out of our sensor or not and 24 if it's analog obviously it's going to be a range anywhere in between if it's a digital value like a switch of some kind or something like that then it's going to either be 0 volts or 24 volts uh, in this example um, our microcontroller because it can only have any 0 to 3.3 we need to drop it so if we use the resistor, um, we could do a divider. So we have the resistor network um, and then you know a, a resistor coming down here to ground. Um, with the 3.3 volt logic, anything probably above two and a half volts would probably give you a, uh, a high voltage, enough to read it as a logic one. Anything less than that is obviously going to give you um, you know a zero volt to a certain extent. So you would have to have, um, something like maybe um, 100k here uh, so that not to and then if you had um, 10k all right you got a basically 100 to 1 um, you got 24 volts up here you're gonna get about two and a half volts down here um, that's probably not quite enough so if you made um, this one say um, 50k all right, and you've got 10k. Um, then you're going to get six. So that six into 24 goes four. So you've got 24 volts up here. Um, you're going to have a quarter of that. So you're going to have six volts, basically here, which is still too high. But it now allows you a lot more flexibility up here as to what you're going to have. So how do you keep this from actually breaking anything? What you could actually do is put. Um, diodes in here like a, a Zener diode so if you put a Zener in here that limited this to uh, 5 volts or 3V3 wherever it may be then that's going to prevent this from going up too high and then you just connect this to here you limit the current through here this basically acts as a dropper for most of it and then anything that goes above the required voltage here so if you put 3V3 or 5V depending on your controller device then that's going to get um, clamped by the Zener diode. Another way of doing that is actually to um, let me just erase this a little bit so I can show you is to put um, you've got the supply rail here so this is V plus and you've got zero volts now we're talking about non-isolated here remember is you have a high value say in this case we should be able to go to um, say 100k here and this is your input to the microcontroller and if you put a diode here um, you put a couple of diodes in here one clamps to the plus volts within 0.6 of a volt um, or less depending on the diode you put in here you can get these as a single package as well um, and then this one prevents this going below um, my, this can't go below minus 0.6 volts and it can't go above plus 0.6 volts um, plus V plus 
um, and then minus zero volts. Right? So what this is doing is you've got 100k to limit your current going straight into here, but your diodes prevent you from going too high or too low. All right? So this is a very, very simple way of clamping, uh, protecting the input. Now having you know, a, a resistor divider here too is, just get rid of that for a moment, is still a good idea because it obviously forces things down. So if you made that, uh, if that's uh, that 10, uh, 100k, so 10k, maybe make that 20k or 15k or something like that, so it's close enough. But if anything went wrong, maybe you put too many volts or something like that, um, the diodes will still protect your input. Now, the microcontrollers already have something like this on their inputs, but they're not designed to carry much current, and it's always a good thing to add a bit of extra protection if you can. So that would work well if you don't need isolation, you don't need to um, worry too much, and you know you you build this extra piece of protection. But if you had um, you know a, a, a a spike or something up here and this went up to 100, 200 volts and it had some kind of capacity with it, these are not going to help protect this and you're probably going to fry everything. So how do you get around that? All right? This would work for some simple things. Um, we want to now provide an extra level of isolation. And for my electronic referee project, that's exactly what I decided I wanted to have for it too. So what I did was, the input of this now, I put a 10k pull-up resistor, just because I don't, you know, you could go the internal ones, but I just put one on here anyway. Um, and I want to be able to, so it's always, no matter what I do, it's going to be pulled to a logic one. Um, I want to be able to drive it down to a logic zero. So a simple transistor here would be sufficient to do that. All right, and I connect that to zero volts. Um, I want to have a bit better than just a single transistor. So if I actually make it a Darlington transistor. So there's another one here, um, driving this one, and if you watch my other videos, you'll start to recognize what I'm showing you here. Um, very small increase, so obviously this is 0.6 volts and 0.6 volts, so 1.2 volts. The minute I take this, anything above 1.2 volts, this thing's going to turn into sat onto saturation, and this thing is going to go to zero volts. The nice thing is that it's only going to go from the V supply that's going into the microcontroller down to the zero volts that's already on the microcontroller as well. Now the next stage, so that I don't have to care, is I'm going to use an opto isolator here. So on the other side of this circuit, I'm going to simply have an LED that is going to turn on this Darlington array, right? And maybe that goes to zero volts. And in my electronic referee, this is what I've done. So um, this here is one part of um, four opto-isolator packages that are in the um, interface board that I built for the electronic referee. So what do I do with the rest of this? Well, this positive side, obviously I have to limit the current. Um, so what I did was, I want to have an external visualization of what's happening, irrespective of whether the microcontroller is turned on. So I put another LED in here that's on the board, so it illuminates when I give it a voltage or pass a current through it. And then I put a 1K resistor here. Now, 24 volts into 1K is going to be 24 milliamps. That's a little bit on the high side, but what that really means is that this resistor needs to be um, preferably probably a half watt, quarter watt one, because 24 volts um, through 1K is going to give you 24 milliamps. That's basically going to give you um, quarter of a watt of power dissipation. That resistor is going to get warm if it's a small one. I use small ones, but then I'm going to use them in a way that they're on time is going to be very short, so it will be okay. Um, if I was going to use this in a final product, I would just increase the size of them to be half watt resistors or something just to prevent them getting damaged if they were left turned on for too long. And that's assuming you have uh, a 24 volt input up here into this. So that's really the circuit I've got. Now on the other end of this, of course, I've got my um, light sensors. So I have a high power um, LED on one end of the Armoron industrial sensors. On the other end, I don't know what the internal circuitry is, but it has a sensor and then there's three three wires coming out of this. One of them is 24 volts. The other one is actually an open collector um, transistor drive. 
that's built into this thing that goes to zero volts. So this, um, what I did with this is I flipped this around and actually connected this to the, the negative side of these and the positive side of these are perfectly connected to the 24 volts. That way when this sensor turns on, it turns the LED on inside the optocoupler driving a logic low into the microcontroller. It also turns the external LED on so that I can see it on the board. Um, and that's really it. Now I have you know, the ability to have 24 volt um, or anything really, anything from about 5 volts will actually turn this on. I've tested it. Um, up to 24 volts driving this circuitry and it's completely isolated up to about 4,000 volts. The microcontroller, um, it's got a 10k pull up so it will happily have our logic high. The transistor because it's a Darlington, sorry I did that square a little bit on the small side. It should have been extended all the way to here. That's actually the optocoupler because it's Darlington driver. Um, it'll go from about one volt, maybe about half a volt, all the way up to the plus volt rail. So if you're on a five volt microcontroller, it'll go to five volts. If it's on a 3.3, it'll go to 3.3 volts. The 10K prevents too much current flowing through, so it keeps the power dissipation still low on this side. Um, and that's pretty much it. Again, very, very simple, uh, very easy to implement. These quad pack opto isolators are just uh, two or three dollars from Element 14. So you know, they're not expensive and the benefits that they provide you is quite extensive. So I uh, highly recommend it. Now I've seen circuits too and I'm not going to put it up on, uh, with this because I don't want to encourage people to do this if they don't know what they're doing. But this little bit of circuitry here, if you actually put you know, um, a reverse protection diode across here all right, to prevent um, if you connected your, you know, your volts the wrong way around and you bump this up to say 10k um, you can actually put up you know 100 odd volts AC on here and you would still be able to detect it from the microcontroller so this simple circuitry this 4k isolation here you could put mains on this side and use this as a zero crossing detector when the, you know when the LED goes off this goes high you know that the mains is almost at zero volts so you could actually use it for triggering something that synchronizes to the mains frequency or various other things um, if, you know, if you were doing some kind of power meter then you could have a zero crossing detector um, and keep a very accurate clock because one of the things about the, um, the mains in North America and the UK and things is that the actual frequency is extremely stable over time and accurate um, anyway it's a slight digression because you know you can do this and because it's isolated it's fairly safe to do providing of course the wiring is appropriately uh, done to handle the high voltages and you have enough clearance on your circuit boards and things like that. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I've just got a 1K here because I'm going, doing nothing more than 24 volts. Um, and I don't have the protection diode in here right now, although you know, um, I've used keyed connectors on my um, launch pad adapters that I built. So if you look at these things here, um, you can see these connectors, these adapters, they have little tabs on one side that prevents you plugging them in the wrong way around. So that actually protects me from um, basically putting too many volts in the wrong direction on the uh, optocouplers and, and frying them. Um, if I wasn't doing that, then I would put the diodes across the LEDs in order to have some reverse protection against uh, messing stuff up. So anyway, that's pretty much it for how to isolate your inputs into a microcontroller using a simple optocoupler a um, couple of resistors and if you want to have the external LED indication then you know one little LED again you know uh, four of these sorry four channels in one device couple of bucks resistors are like two cents each so that's nothing and a little LED is like 20 cents so for probably less than um, three dollars you could have a four channel um, up to isolated input into a microcontroller uh, very very easily. Um, some of the boards you can get for, uh, for the, either the launch pads or the Arduino shields already have this kind of circuitry on them. If you couple this with the other videos I've done where I've dealt with driving loads out with opto isolators and things like that too, um, you can make a, a nice little controller uh, that can have itself completely protected from the outside environment um, and be uh, very very useful for all sorts of different projects. Uh, the circuit diagram that I've used for the electronic referee, uh, I will put on my website so that you can see it. It's got all the values I've used and the part numbers and everything else. 
Um, but that's pretty much it. So, you know, between this video and the previous couple that I've done regarding um, interfacing 24 volts out of a microcontroller using a FET to increase your power capability for handling high loads like LED strip lights and things like that, um, you pretty much can handle interfacing to anything. Um, with the output one, again, you know, you can always, always use the, the transistor or the FET to drive a relay if you wanted to have uh, mains voltage isolation and you really wanted to be sure of that actual isolation. Uh, even though the optical isolator will do it on the way out, uh, a physical relay where it's wired off board or something like that would give you the extra um, level of protection from you know electrocuting yourself or something like that. Anyway, if you haven't watched the previous videos to do with driving outputs, then you know please go ahead and do so. I'll make sure the links are there for it. Um, anyway, this one deals with inputs. I hope you found it interesting. And um, you know, as I said, if you're going to start dealing with high voltages, then please make sure you know what you're doing and um, take adequate precautions. And if you're not sure, go ask an expert or get somebody that knows what they're doing to help you with it. Um, otherwise, just stick to low voltages. And as long as your power supplies, you know, are isolated from the mains and things like that. Um, which, by the way, you know, uh, USB ones and things like that are, but power supplies that are in things like LED lighting and ceilings and stuff, they're not isolated from the main. So don't think you could rip one out of something like that and stick a circuit in it and you would be protected. You wouldn't. All right. So just be aware of what you're doing. Be safe. And I hope you have some fun. And uh, now that you've got this information, you'll be able to start interfacing a few things in your backyard um, or other places and uh, have some fun with it. All right. Bye.